Welcome to a Senior Citizens Forum presented by Benefits for You 2 Insurance Services. And I'm Janice Wood. Uh, today, my, my guest is uh, Kelly Merkel, and she is a, uh, a loan officer. And that's yes. that she works with mortgages. But real quick, what do we do at Benefits for You 2 Insurance Services? Our specialty is Medicare. We also do regular health insurance. Um, so if you have any questions about your health insurance or about your Medicare insurance, which is for people 65 and above, or people that are turning 65, please, at the end of this um, presentation, you should be able to find uh, how to contact me and how to contact Kelly. Yes. I am really happy about having Kelly here because this is a subject on the Senior Citizens Forum that I haven't had anybody talk about before. So I was looking for the right person to um, talk about this subject. So I was looking with, for somebody who had experience and Kelly has over 20 years of experience yes. in the loan office, uh, the loan mortgage yes okay she uh loves working with people and she mm -hmm. likes to make sure that the loan that she is providing uh her clients is a loan that meets their needs exactly. loan should not be cookie cutter it's just like uh, uh, my insurances that I offer are not cookie cutter. I have to find out what my client's needs are. And that's exactly what Kelly does. As uh, senior citizens, we're, we're always bombarded by marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay, May it be uh, it's loans, you're getting it on the television, you're getting it on the email, you're getting it. Now I'm getting a text message to me. I'm getting letters in the mail saying that things are, you know, interest rates have, are lower again. And because of that, I know Kelly is really busy right now. So I really appreciate her time. Yes. But Kelly is going to go over the different types of loans that are out there. We're also going to go over, which includes reverse mortgages, which we hear so much about. But real quick, why do we need to have a loan, especially if you own property or properties? Uh, everybody's need for a loan could be different at lower interest rates. It could be maybe your house, your property needs to have uh, some upgrades done to it. Maybe you have some indebtedness that you need to get taken care of. Maybe there's that exciting trip that you, that dream trip that you want to take. Everybody's needs are different. Or maybe it's setting up something for those grandchildren that we have. You can take that money and set something up for them. There's so many different things that you can do with, with the money that you have in your home. But everybody's needs are going to be different. And there are senior citizens who are finding that they just don't have enough money to live on. So they're looking at the different options. So is a reverse mortgage the right thing? Is it just going and looking for a conventional loan loan the right thing? We don't, I don't know, okay? And I know what I feel is right for me. So, mm -hmm. so Kelly, why don't yes. you tell us something about yourself how did you get into becoming a loan officer i know you have a master's degree yes at business and finance yes and how did you get to do this and what is it that you enjoy about this i love help well first thank you for having me on janice and um i love working with people and helping them meet their goals whether it's refinancing their house or buying a house or working with a first time home buyer or working with a senior citizen on a reverse mortgage. Um, I got into this business because my parents owned rental properties and they're always doing things with their rental properties when I was a kid. So when I went to college, I studied finance and I got my degree in finance and I was always very interested 
in um, housing and real estate because my parents really did a lot in real estate. That's how they planned for their retirement was they um, tried to buy properties and have rentals. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know if I was going to be a loan officer or a realtor or I just knew I was going to do something in real estate. So um, with the finance degree, I uh, started doing mortgages. I um, have been an underwriter, an underwriting manager. Um, I've worked for a lot of big banks before going out and working for my mortgage broker at Loans Direct. So I have a lot of experience with big institutions and then also as a mortgage broker. So I like having um, a lot of options and having just a lot of knowledge to get the loans done and, and help people and find the best solution because everybody's needs are different. Okay. So as a um, mortgage broker, which could be simple mm -hmm. to me because I'm like a mm -hmm, exactly. health insurance broker, Medicare insurance broker, you represent many different institutions. Yes, so I work for a mortgage broker. It's a mortgage brokerage company and I'm a loan officer and working for a broker, we're able to use wholesale lenders. So there's a variety of wholesale lenders out there. Um, we're not tied to, you know, when I worked at a bank, I was tied to that bank. And if for some reason that bank didn't wanna make a loan, we didn't make that loan. As a mortgage broker, there's different lenders that have different guidelines and different criteria. And so you're almost always able to place a loan. Um, you don't have to turn it away if it doesn't fit an exact guideline, like at a bank. Okay, which so I think nice. is really good because it's like, it's not cookie cutter. Yeah, so you have options and you research and you really, you know, dive in and figure out what the customer's goals are, what they're looking to do, what they're looking to do short-term, long-term. I mean, it all impacts uh, what, what's gonna be the best mortgage for them. Okay, so when you say wholesale, just so explain what that means. So a wholesale lender uh, works with mortgage brokers. They probably do not have a direct division where you could call in like say you call into a big bank, you call into maybe Chase or Wells Fargo, and they have a retail department that answers the phone and takes your loan application. And then you're um, a retail customer with the bank. So as a wholesale lender, they're going to deal with the mortgage brokers. And um, it's a middleman. So there's the, the borrower or the buyer, and then there's the mortgage broker, and then there's lenders. And these lenders are not necessarily banks, like you would think of a bank where you can deposit your checks and um, withdraw money and have checking and savings accounts. They're strictly mortgage lenders. So all they do is mortgages. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a, another way to get a mortgage. Okay. So uh, I know I've used mortgage brokers in the past and I really like them versus a bank because they're able to shop around for the best rates. So when yes. we talk about rates, which we know that they fluctuate all the time. Daily. As a homeowner, I know I get stuff in the mail saying, okay, it's dropped again. So when would you recommend would be a good time if I were to do, if I wanted to refinance my house Mm -hmm. And I can see I would probably qualify for a percentage lower. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it to me with the cost to yeah. refi? So you have to look and make sure it makes sense for you. So if you refinance and you're going to lower your rate, that's great. Your payment's going to be lower, but that payment savings, is it going to be significant enough to cover the cost if the loan has costs to do the loan, then is the savings enough for it to make sense? If you have a very large loan amount, if you have a $500,000 loan and your interest rate is a half less, that's going to be a more significant savings than if you have a $100,000 loan and you know the, the rate is a half less. So it, you have to look at it and it absolutely has to make sense. Just because your rate's going to be a little bit lower, you may not make sense to refinance. If your rate's going to be a lot lower, or your payment's gonna be a lot lower. It, again, depends on what you're looking to do. Um, and then it, it definitely will make sense to do so. So I do an analysis with my clients to make sure that it's cost-effective to refinance. Okay. 
So when you say you're doing an analysis, what are you looking at in the analysis? So I would look at the monthly savings and then look at the costs and then divide it. How many months would you have to have this loan for it to make sense to refinance? So there's a regulation that says it has to be 60 months or less, but that's five years. So you probably want to recover any uh recoup any costs faster than that. So it's just having the knowledge and saying your payment's going down $100 and it's going to take 20 months to recover the, you know, the cost of doing the loan. So does it make sense? Are you planning on selling this property in five years? Are you planning on living in this property forever? Um, are you planning on, you know, having your children inherit this property? It's just going to have to make sense uh, what you're looking to do. So, and if it doesn't make sense today, that doesn't make, mean it's not going to make sense like in a year or in a couple months. It just depends. Are rates going up or are rates going down? Do we just want to wait a little longer um, until it makes sense? Sometimes I tell people they have a fantastic rate and then it's like, well, you don't want to refinance. So it just depends. Yeah. I, I like that about you because you're, you're doing what's best for your clients yeah. versus you making that extra. Yeah, there's, you know, everyone's looking when you buy Most people who buy a home need a loan. Uh, most people who own a home at some point will refinance. So there's plenty of customers. You just have to make sure that you're always looking out for the customer and doing what's best for the customer. And then it comes back tenfold because they'll just be very happy and, and want to um, tell everyone to use Kelly. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> so, so Kelly, now we're, we're faced, especially seniors, with all this stuff talking about reverse mortgages. So depending upon the situation, why would I want to use a reverse mortgage? Well, okay, so a reverse mortgage is age-based. So you have to be 62 or older, and not just yourself, your spouse. So whoever is in the home with you, um, everyone has to be 62 or older because it has to, it's an age-based product. And you have to look at your situation. Um, on a reverse mortgage, you can, it's called a home equity conversion mortgage. So you're converting your home's equity. So we've always paid our mortgage. We've always had a forward mortgage or a regular traditional mortgage. Every month you make your mortgage payment. And then at some point in the future, you may own your home free and clear. You may have a very small mortgage on your home and now you're retiring and you can have that equity work for you that you've built up over time by paying your mortgage and the market's appreciated. And now your home value has gone up, your loan amount's gone down and you can um, use that equity. You can use it a couple of different ways. You can have an income stream. So you can have your equity pay you every month. So you have kind of like a pension check. Uh, the reverse mortgage can pay you every month. You can do a line of credit where you don't, you know, I don't want to take all the equity in my property out right now. Um, all the eligible equity in my property out right now. Um, I want to have a line of credit. So that way down the road, if I need the equity to do home improvements or repair a roof or go on a trip or do something for my grandkids, you know, the things that you mentioned, then it's available, but you're not necessarily eroding the equity in your property. Cause even though you have a line of credit, you're not, you haven't drawn on it yet, or you've only drawn a little bit on it to use and you're kind of preserving it. Right. And then you could do a lump sum where, uh, with the reverse mortgage, you'll know what your loan amount's gonna be, what is eligible, and um, you can take that money as a lump sum. It's usually dispersed uh, either two or three times if you do a lump sum. So they don't just give you, you know, $300,000 immediately. They may give you 100,000 and then another 100 and then another 100. So it's kind of dispersed out over time. So there's a lot of choices and you can just kind of decide what works best for you. And so, you know, and there's a fixed rate uh, reverse mortgage, there's a variable rate reverse mortgage. And again, there's uh, pros and cons to each and the loan amounts are different with each. And so you can have the reverse mortgage cover your property taxes and insurance. You can pay your property taxes and insurance yourself. 
So one part of a reverse mortgage is that before I do an application, um, there's an education course that the senior citizen will take. And they take the education course and they're doing it online is the easiest now with COVID. And then there's a seven day waiting period. And after that waiting period is up, then I would take your loan application. So you have an education course that goes in great detail over the product. And then I have immediately a handbook that is part of the course that's from um, HUD that I uh, make sure to give to the seniors and go over as well. So it's a very educated decision to, to decide to you know, tap into the equity of your home as part of your retirement plan. Is that also, would you need to talk to somebody in like a financial advisor to see if that's the right move for you if you have one? Yes, yes absolutely. So typically when someone's looking to a reverse mortgage, they usually consult with their adult children. I've had meetings with um, the borrowers, their adult children, they may go to their CPA, they may go to their financial planner. So a reverse mortgage is not going to have tax consequences, income tax consequences, like maybe liquidating um, equities, stocks, you know, uh, stuff, the items that you have with your financial planner. So it's always important. Again, the most important part is making an educated decision. And so you need to know what are your options? What can you do? What can I do if I do a reverse mortgage? What can I do if I look into my, uh, talk to my financial planner and look at my finances and my savings and my investments. What about my CPA? What if I own rental properties? Um, what if I want to buy a rental property? I mean, there's a lot of factors involved. Um, mortgages are actually pretty easy, but people are complicated. So it just depends, you know, as a person, where are you? What properties do you own? What investments do you have? What do your adult children think? What is your situation? What are your goals? What are you looking to do? You know, it, it's a big picture. A loan's just a little task. Okay. But re retiring's a big picture. So if I decided, well, the reverse mortgage isn't the way I want to go. I've done mm -hmm. all the education, which I didn't mm -hmm. realize that there was a class for reverse mortgages. And I just wanted to do a conventional loan. Or you can do that as well. Right. Um, I can't. Uh, well, there's a conventional loan, and then there's government loans like FHA and VA. Right. Uh, FHA is a government loan. VA is a government loan for veterans specifically. A conventional loan, you can go that route. So the difference is on a conventional loan, you have to income qualify, and there's credit score requirements. So. Um, if you're retiring and you're looking to increase your retirement income that you have monthly, a conventional loan is not going to necessarily increase your income. You may reduce your mortgage payment by refinancing. And so when your bill is less, then you have more income that you're able to keep and not have to spend towards a mortgage. So you can refinance into a conventional loan as well. And so you just have to look at the situation um, Look at the, you know, the credit score, look at the qualifying income and just make sure again that it makes sense. What is the payment versus the income? And that's a ratio. And we make sure that ratio is, uh, is low, that, the, you know, there's residual income to live on every month. Once you cover your bills, how much money do you have left over, you know, for uh, groceries and things like that. So that's an option as well. And I do both. You do both. So you do mm -hmm. both. But you also, um, let me go back and then we'll, I know what I want to say. You do reverse mortgages and you do conventional and you do the FHA and, and MBA. the federal, the Fannie Mae and the Freddie mm -hmm. Mac. I mean, yes. <laughs> and if I wanted to say, say, now I'm looking at a conventional loan versus a FHA or a Freddie Mac or a Fannie Mae, how do I make that decision? I mean, I know you're going to help me make that decision, but how would we go about looking at it? Again, it's an educated decision. And so I have um, a spreadsheet that shows the pros and cons of each. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are government subsidized entities that help make affordable um, housing and they help make uh, home loans affordable. And um 
the access to the funds to have home loans. They're, that's what they do. So they don't actually do loans. Lenders who do loans then will use Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and their guidelines to make sure that they have the funds to keep lending. So it uh, doesn't really matter with a loan if you go to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, they're competitors, they have similar guidelines. Um, a conventional loan is what you would think of a bank loan. Like a, a lender, a bank is gonna make a loan. Uh, FHA loan is a government loan. And so um, that is also like conventional. It just has different requirements. Um, they, they have different guidelines that they use. And then a VA loan is specifically for veterans and they have different guidelines that they use and they each have you know, pros and cons. I'll have first time home buyers where they qualify for FHA loan and they qualify for a VA loan to buy a house. And we'll go through those options and which is best. Um, typically with an FHA loan, you're looking at someone who has a small down payment and um, they're gonna have monthly mortgage insurance. Every FHA loan has monthly mortgage insurance um, and upfront mortgage insurance, regardless of the loan to value. So if you have a lot of equity in your property, you're most likely not gonna wanna do an FHA loan because that has monthly mortgage insurance and that's an additional expense that could be avoided with a conventional loan. So does I that help? I've never wanted to pay that monthly mortgage insurance. <laughs> one of those. It is one of those things, but to not have mortgage insurance, you put 20% down on a property. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the first time home buyers and even people who are maybe selling to upgrade or selling to get a, a smaller property, empty nesters, you know, there are a lot of people out there who just don't have 20% down. And so mortgage insurance, I guess, it's kind of a necessary evil because if you have 5% to put down, 10% to put down, that's a significant amount of money. And that mortgage insurance is not going to be forever. It's going to help you to get into a property. And then we're going to work on getting rid of it as soon as possible. So well, how, it's, you know, it has its place. Okay. But what about, I'm not buying a piece of property. I'm just okay. refinancing. Am I going to have to pay mortgage insurance then? Most likely, no. You're going to hopefully have enough equity built up to where you're not going to need to pay mortgage insurance. Okay. Because I always look at the mortgage insurance as being something added on to my mortgage mm -hmm. payment every, every month. It's typically with purchases that you'll mostly see okay. mortgage insurance. So you mentioned a VA loan a few minutes ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the VA loan, that's for veterans, am I correct? Yes. 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 And they get special loans offered to them. Is there really mm -hmm. a big difference in what the, the veterans are getting under that type of a loan? Yes and no. It, it's a loan that's just structured a little bit differently. A uh, benefit of a VA loan is you can have a zero down payment in a lot of instances, and there's no monthly mortgage insurance. So Typically, if you're not a veteran, you're going to have a minimum of a 3% down payment or 3.5% down payment, maybe a 5% down payment, depending on the price of the home. And you're going to have monthly mortgage insurance. So the veteran um, has the benefit of not having that monthly mortgage insurance. They do pay upfront mortgage insurance, which is a bit pricey. It's uh, factored into the loan and it's part of the monthly payment to cover that. So they don't entirely not have insurance. It's just not part of their monthly payments, which is really nice. It's a good benefit. And VA loans typically have lower rates than say a conventional loan. It's not drastic, it's not 2% lower, but it could be a bit lower, a quarter, enough to where it's like, oh, that's kind of nice as a veteran to have a little bit of a lower rate. Well, I, I think that is really great because when you're mm -hmm. dealing with properties that I know in the area I live in, I guess a medium price house is going to be anywhere from six hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and that's another reason why you know the mortgage insurance isn't the worst thing because if the property is six hundred thousand and you're trying to save ten percent, 
you know, that's $60,000. I know when I bought my first home, there's no way I would have had $60,000. That's like impossible as a first time home buyer. And so my first property we bought on a FHA and we had the lowest down payment and we had that mortgage insurance, but we lived there and we were able to refinance and get out of it eventually. And we were so happy to be into a property and we could afford it the monthly, you know, mortgage insurance. So it was a necessary evil and it helped us to get, you know, where we needed to be and get into a home. So I don't think it's a terrible thing. I think it's a, it's needed to ensure the lenders. So they're comfortable lending with such a small down payment. It's very risky if you're putting only 3% down on a property from a lender's perspective. So well, I can see the, uh, lender's perspective and then mm -hmm. I'm at it on, on the other side. Now I know um, there's what they call upfront costs when you go mm -hmm. to do a loan. So yes. you, you need to be looking at, uh, you know, what the points are. I mean, yeah. people that own property usually are familiar with this. What are all the, the charges on, a, on the loans? Can you go over some of that? Sure. Um, when you do a loan, there can be loan origination, which would be uh, my compensation. There can be discount points, which are associated with the interest rate. You're going to have your title, escrow, the lender will have a fee. It can be called a lender fee, an underwriting fee. Um, you're going to have recording fees. Uh, you may have prorations for taxes and insurance. If you decide to impound your taxes and insurance, you know, you have to get money into those accounts to set them up so that the taxes and insurance can be paid when they're due. You know, um, that isn't a fee, but that's a cost. I mean, you have to have that money to put into those accounts to establish them. Um, so the way it works is with your interest rate, at least on a forward mortgage, a traditional mortgage, you can adjust your rate. So a first time home buyer may not have the funds to cover their closing costs. We're not in a market right now where sellers want to contribute and help buyers cover their closing costs because there's a lot of buyers trying to buy each property that's for sale. So it's not attractive to ask, hey, <laughs> help me cover some of my closing costs. So you can get a lender credit and a lender credit can help cover closing costs. And that's associated with the rate. So your rate may be a little bit higher, but then it'll have a lender credit to help cover the costs. And then you just have to look at it, is it a good rate? Right now rates are like really low, historically low. And so that is an option as well. And then you know, if rates continue to decline at some point in the future, again, you could refinance and not have to worry that you're paying a little higher rate to get your closing costs covered. Okay, and that includes what they call points, which I was always confused with the points. Points is when you buy down your rate. So I'm gonna pay my own closing costs and I'm gonna pay uh, per, Parse, you know, a half a point, a quarter point, an eighth of a point, a tenth of a point. I'm going to pay some additional sum of money to buy that rate down. I am going to never sell this property and it's going to cost me a thousand dollars to buy down the rate to the rate I want, but I'm going to do it because it's worth the money or it's worth the money because of my payment savings. Again, you have to make an educated decision. You have to do an analysis and look, okay, if I buy down the rate, my payments, you know, if you buy down the rate and your payment's only $50 less or $25 less, it's not worth it. Just keep your money in your savings account, you know, but if it is worth it and it does make sense, then absolutely. You just have to make an educated decision. And I think that's where I come in because it's, you know, if the, if you're paying money for a lower rate and you're not getting the monthly savings that you should, it doesn't make sense to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I know when I, every time I, I've ever refinanced my home, it, it's not easy. I've got to show so much, you know, what, how, where does my income come from? Where, you know, what does my bank statements look like? Do I have any money in any other source, any other sources? Yeah. And it takes, you know, when somebody says 30 to 60 days, Sometimes it takes almost two months to get a loan to go through. Well, so um, 
technologies help that a little bit where loans can be a little faster in the sense that um, we're not faxing, you know, in the old days, we had these big fat files and we faxed everything or, or sent everything in the mail. Um, loans typically take 30 days and you're right. It's documentation, documentation, documentation. I have to document everything in a loan file. I do it up front when we decide that a loan's going to make sense. We're going to get every piece of documentation we need. I'm going to give you a laundry list and you're going to get everything you need. And it's a bit cumbersome. It's a lot, but it's kind of a one-time deal. Get all your paperwork, get it all before I submit your loan. So we're not, you know, having to have last minute items. We have everything up front. We have a complete file. We submit it. It goes through the process. I'm the only point of contact for the entire process, which is nice. So that way I can update you consistently on where your loan is in the process, explain the steps. And then it's like a one-time deal. You have to spend a few days getting all your paperwork and then hopefully we've gotten everything we need. And then it's 30 days of doing your loan and then you don't have to worry about that again. <laughs> so do you have a list? I do. So Not you're... only for my borrowers, but for myself. To check off, okay, did I get that social security award letter? Did I get the bank statement? You know, I need to be very organized for things to go smoothly. And I do like things to go smoothly. I wouldn't be in this business if it didn't, because it can be very stressful. And so I try and be extremely organized and have all my files intact. I was an underwriter for a long time. If you send a messy file to an underwriter, you're going to regret it. <laughs> Yes, you are. Yeah, they're going to condition you for a lot of stuff. I, I can remember, oh, <laughs> got to be 20 years ago, I did a loan and I specifically said, I am not going to pay mortgage insurance, okay? Mm -hmm. So when the, um, the notary came out with my loan, okay, I actually read the paperwork and there was mortgage insurance on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like really upsetting to me. And I called them uh, and I just said, I'm not doing this. And the, and the notary was like, they're going to be upset. And I'm going, well, I'm upset because this is something I specifically said. I did not want to pay. Yeah. So uh, definitely want to avoid any kind of situation like that. Um, again, I, I do loans for a living and I try and make it as stress-free as, as, stress as possible for myself which is, you know, obviously listening to the client, having them informed, getting everything that's needed. If for something changes with the loan term, such as, you know, now we're going to need mortgage insurance where originally we didn't, just really communicating and being that point of contact and making sure that it still makes sense. If something happens during the process and the loan doesn't make sense now, well, you don't have to do it. You know what I mean? It's uh, usually if you're doing a refinance, you have options, you know, and one would be just to not refinance at this time. Now I'm going to bring up another scenario. Okay. okay. All right. So what if I, uh, I'm a senior and I'm selling my property that I lived in. I raised my home. I had my home with my children in it. Okay. But it's time for me to downsize. And I want to go into a senior community where I want to buy. Do you work in those situations also? Yes. So that's really common to downsize. And with the home equity conversion mortgage, the reverse mortgage, when you sell your home, you can decide if you want to use a reverse mortgage to buy your next home or if you want to use a traditional mortgage to buy your home. And so you're going to have proceeds. Most likely if you've lived in your home a long time, you're going to have built up equity. And when you sell, you're going to, that's going to translate to cash okay. at closing. You're going to get a check. And then do you want to use that check? How much of those funds or how much of those proceeds do you want to use to purchase your new place? Do you want to maybe use less of those funds and get a reverse mortgage and have no mortgage payment and then put the rest of the money with your financial planner as an investment, talk to your CPA, see what they suggest you do. Um, you know, what is the structure of your income? I have uh, retirees where they own businesses 
you know, they're old enough to have a reverse mortgage and they have a reverse mortgage, but, you know, they own businesses and things like that. So it's, you know, what is going to make the most sense for the client? So you may be able just to take the proceeds and pay cash for the home and you live in the home and you pay cash and somewhere down the road, you decide to get a reverse mortgage. You know, if you downsize at 60, you're not 62, you can't get a reverse mortgage. Maybe you pay cash for your new home and then down the road when you're 70, 75, 80, you decide to get a reverse mortgage. It's an age-based loan. So, you know, the older a person is, the more, the more money they can get in a reverse mortgage because it's an age-based loan. Yeah. Okay. This has all been really interesting. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. It can be complicated. It can be complicated, but if it's complicated, we're now going to show how people can uh, find you, get that oh, good. information, okay? Yes. Uh, so here's Thank the information. You. you see how to get a hold of Kelly. Kelly would love to answer any questions that you have. Uh, you can also contact me at this information that we ha I have up above. Um, I, it's, it's really been great. I hope to bring you back sometime in, in the near future because I know we didn't cover everything under mortgages. And I find that when I do these shows, um, when people come back, we discuss something that we didn't even discuss the time before. Yeah. So I look forward to having you come back again. This has been a lot of fun this morning. Yes. So one of the things I want to say, it, I know our targeted audience here is seniors, but the information Kelly has given you this morning can be used for a first home buyer. It yeah. can be used for selling that home and going purchasing another home to another home. It, I mean, there's so many different combinations that can be done. Um, and I, you can, I mean, this is a whole different subject. Say I wanna take money out of my home and I wanna buy another piece of property. We'll leave that to another time. But there's just so many different scenarios that goes along with in the mortgage company and things are always changing with all the lenders. And I know from talking to Kelly, She's staying up to date on everything mm -hmm. that's happening in that world. So um, please, you know, share our, uh, our video with you, with anyone you want. They don't have to be seniors. Uh, you're going to find us on, this will be posted on um, Facebook. It will be on Instagram. We're going to post on LinkedIn. Of course, we always YouTube it. YouTube it, and we should very shortly be putting it on a podcast. So um, you're going to find us in all different places. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank for you. Me this morning, this was a lot of fun, and um, have a great uh, a great day. And I look forward to you coming back again. Thank you so much, Janice. Yeah. This Thank was you. Great. <laughs> okay. You can.